Please don't. Really? No. <laughs> Quick, give me a paddle or two. Oh, God. What do you. Never mind. I'm like, that's not a paddle. <laughs> you can make it like that. Nice. Anyway. Four, three, two. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Cubs Out Loud COL 463. It's another on the road show. And we are at Claw. So for those of you that are just tuning in weirdly, hi, welcome, new timers. You don't know who the fuck we are. So, uh, my name's Gary. I'm one of the co-hosts, and these guys are also my co-hosts. I'm Damon. Hi. That makes me Chester. That makes me Chester. <laughs> You're always so quiet and kind of like shy about Maybe it. Bit. We also I'm have chubby. <laughs> we also have a studio audience here in the room. So if you hear noises and random things and distractions, Hello. yeah, that's what that's about. <laughs> Hey. Oh, yeah. Berlin, 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 Berlin. No, Berlin, Berlin, Berlin. Berlin. <laughs> I just realized we're surrounded by head. <laughs> we're missing furry head, over. bear head, puppy head. Did you win pants? Yeah. <laughs> head. <laughs> so, anyways, uh, yeah, we're doing another uh, on the road show, which is kind of funny. So, for those of you that follow normally in our audience, the last episode was an on the road show at Drench Fur. And I interviewed Ray and Aaron. This one was out on the uh, beer tour with the bears, drinking beers. Drinking beers. Drinking beers, getting drunk. I wasn't drinking beer. Oh, uh, well, that's... Your I was drinking with my beer. Oh. So, um... I've been drinking. 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 Anyway, yeah. So, uh, it's... Let me see if I get this right. Cleveland Leather Annual, annual Weekend. Yeah, they changed it before. It used to be awareness, but now they've just gone straight to annual. annual. Yeah. So that's what it stands for. I know. Every time I look at that label, that's what I think of. We got chips from Subway earlier today, and it says Miss Vicky's, but every time I see it, I swear it says Miss Vanjie's. Nice. Well, you know, you'll have that. So, um, yeah, it's 2018. It's the, I don't know what year of Claw it is. So 20, or 18. They, they, it's no, they not used... technically 18. There's a, there's a half a year? year? No, something like that. They did something weird where... At first, it was, it didn't start in 2000, so it's not 2000, it's not 18 years. It's something weird, I can't remember it off the top of my head, but there's right. a reason why it's not exactly 18, but they call it 18 because that's easier, so. Because right. it matches the year, yeah. but they don't put the little apostrophe. Yeah. Like, so they don't, so, right. which would make it easier to know that it's the, right. So it just says 18, and you're like, okay, so it must be the 18th clock, which is not the case. Not always. They also don't have a TH after it, so you're just like, huh? Yeah. But anyways, uh, claw does not have a theme, so it's not like a bear run where you're like, ooh, this is the theme. It's just leather. Yeah. Although, it's very much a melting pot now. It's, it's become, right. yeah. It has definitely become. Leather, a like kink, puppy. There is some rubber. of the bear culture, rubber, latex, furry. Yeah, there was a furry, <laughs> yeah, there was a furry <laughs> walk today. So it's a lot of different stuff. Um, but it's been it's been pretty fun and yeah. interesting. Yeah. Very busy. Yeah. There's My a God. ton of things. So for those of you that don't know what happens at CLAW, um, the main focus that they have here is actually what they call AM and PM sessions. So they actually do lecture workshops. And that's the main focus of Friday and Saturday. So there's yeah. two Friday, no, three Friday AM sessions and then two PM session slots. Mm -hmm. right. So each day there's five sessions. So technically, if you went to everything, you could hit 10 workshops over the course of two days. Um, I counted it uh, last week sometime and just on all the classes that I counted was about 100. Wow. But they do add and subtract some as yeah. the time gets closer before, uh, like, Wednesday when they put out the final schedule. I haven't yeah. counted how many classes there were as a, as a final count, but as of a week ago, there were over 100. Yeah, and yeah. it's crazy because it, it runs the gamut in regards to different things, different fetishes. There were a lot of classes this time around focusing on more learning than actually a like skill set like, like learning workshops. yeah like learning how to you, they are, there's tons of classes how do you flog how do you do a you know single tail whip how do you you know whatever but there was also a lot of talk about things there was there's usually a leather boy forum there's usually a leather club forum 
which mm. um, Jim and I went to the, our first year since we were, Jim was newly the either vice president or president of Scorpius. And he was, we wanted to talk, do this forum and talk about it. And it was, it was interesting, but you do it one year and you kind of, you don't really need to do it again. Yeah. So. Well, and that, some, some sessions do occur every single year. Like I missed one this year that I went to last year. I wanted to repeat again, which was called the, um, the heads of the round table. I think they call it, which is leaders who put on events mm. and it's mostly the, well, it's like 98% the leather community, and then I showed up last year randomly. Um, so I was the lone bear uh, kind of event organizer. But I found it so insightful to see, like, the leather kink side of things and their discussions about, like, inclusion of social media mm -hmm. and those type of things. So I ended up, unfortunately, missing it um, yesterday morning. But that's one where I wasn't that bent out of shape that I missed it because yeah. it's like, well, I did get to go to it last year. And I imagine this year's topics or discussion was a little different. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I agree that I think there's a lot more, um, instead of presentational, there was more discussion yeah. kind of things that took place this year. Right. So like one of them that I went to that I absolutely enjoyed was the open by poly and more group where TJ and Slade uh, led everyone in the room. We did introductions and then basically they started with one question and then we just pinballed around the room back and forth, like everybody either adding to the discussion or asking another question that led off of it. Oh. Um, huge shout outs to, to TJ because he was able to keep track up to six people at a time that were like wanting to comment like next and people were raising hands. So they wow. were working around the, the room in that case to, to get things done. Our audience is leaving. So. <laughs> I'm gonna go get my balls filled with soon. <laughs> I'm jealous, have fun, take pictures. <laughs> <laughs> One of the uh, uh, classes that you had gone to was more based on a uh, psychological standpoint and mm -hmm. anthropological standpoint. The um, I forgot the name of the class. The wait, the one that I went to today. Or the one I went to yesterday. Yesterday's was humiliation. No, 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 not that one. Oh, then today's the first one that I went to uh, that Dr. Richard gave. Yes. Um, his was about, like, he, a lot of it focused on, back in 2016, they did what was called the Kink Health Survey, which I really wish I'd known more about at the time and helped could have promote. So between, I think it was April and August or April and September, they had 1,500 participants and they asked, it was a very extensive survey. Like, mm. it wasn't one of these, like, you'll be done in three minutes. It was, and depending on how you answered some questions, you got more questions. Mm. But it was, it asked a range of things. I remember like, that. what do you do for your mental health? What do you do for your physical health? Are you open to your PCP about kink and BDSM? I mean, it was, it was a lot of stuff. And today's session when we went was discussing some of the revelations that came out of that. And um, I've talked to, to Dr. Richard, he's interested, I would love to have him on the podcast because I think there's so much stuff that he has insight on. Um, he has a PhD in uh, psychology and a couple other items, I don't have his credentials in front of me, but uh, he's very interested by the idea of coming on. Oh, but sweet. Um, he's, he's a really, he just seems really well, like kind of rounded in, in the presentation style. But for me, that's what I fell in love with Claw two years ago when I came, when it was at the Holiday Inn and I just oh, yeah. did a day pass on Saturday. So I was like, oh, cool, I can do a day pass and I can get some like sessions and see what these workshop things are. His was the very first one and I was just spellbound from the moment because I was like, it's it was very cerebral for me to be mm -hmm. like, oh, like this is like fucking professor like lectoral kind yeah. of stuff. Not all of Claw is that way. Correct. And that's what I love is I think there's something that's like very beginner level and then there's some of this other stuff like the ones I went to today was that and then I went to one that which was BDSM history in North America, like 20th, mid 20th century forward. So huh. it was about the concept of how everyone thinks kink and BDSM comes from like the Greeks and like, and you know, has this kind of antiquity thing to it. Yeah. And the lecture today from these two presenters were like, no, actually, what we know of today, what you see at Claw is very much coming from the gay male biker gang evolution oh. between the world wars and that kind of stuff. Wow. And, oh yeah, I was like, <laughs> it was very, very cool like to sit there and, um, yeah, that kind yeah. of stuff. Very so Tom of Finland. Yeah. The, yeah. Well, yeah, they didn't, and it was funny because they didn't even bring any of that up. But I think it's because they were focusing more towards the North America right. piece. Yeah. But that's like so for me, those are the things that I was like, yes, yes, yes. Like those yeah. are the boxes of of things that I was interested in. But then like you and Jim presented. Yeah, Jim and sure. I presented two classes this year. Well, Jim mostly presented. I was assisting because mm -hmm. 
Um, so Jim did two classes. The first one was setting the scene, setting the scene, enhancing your fantasy role play. Um, it was a he did a class in 2015 that was just like kind of talking about what fantasy role play is, as opposed to like general like role play like dom sub. You know, mm-hmm. it was meant to be like more like you know, doctor, patient, and those kind of things. And then this class was a kind of second act to that, Mm -hmm. where to enhance the scene, like props and setting and, you know, location, you know, all that kind of stuff. He was talking about how to get those items and um, what you can do with regards to enhancing the scene um, to make it more authentic slash realistic. Poppers. (laughs) Poppers enhance everything. No. <laughs> no, I, seriously, though, for me, when I'm doing a scene like that where I'm supposed to be in a certain headspace, yeah. poppers help me get there. Well, it's not about the headspace per se. It's more like just like actually making the scenario more realistic. Right. But, but to me, helping get that realistic sense is I need to overcome my own mental blocks of saying this is fake and make ah, me right. So I need to break. Yeah. You need you need something. To I need sure something to got make it. me break through that. And poppers usually help. And it's helps. funny that wasn't hmm. mentioned. Like none of like nothing about enhancing mine was mentioned in the class. Right. Not that Jim would, didn't. Th- I know I'm sure Jim didn't think about it. But it's like one of those things that no one thinks about. Like you do kind of like have to break that mental wall of yeah. like you were in a scene what did you it sounds like the focus was a lot on the visual did you guys talk about the other senses like like what i'm thinking of is i'm like oh well what if you were like wanting to do this like uh outdoor woods kind of thing or like um like it's because you'll know why this is, i'm bringing this up if you were thinking about like what if you were like thinking of a hippie commune kind of love <laughs> like like would you have incense, incense burning? burning you know yeah. would you have like some ganja those that also wasn't brought up but that could be a, another aspect of the class so we had that class go ahead yeah. or you're oh i was just gonna say it um i learned that simply by somebody talking about a medical scene and they're like an easy way to help set that medical scene mm-hmm. and well in conjunction with that the guy was talking about doing sensory deprivation so yeah. this would help right. he said you know he had his sub uh their vision blocked out but to help set that scene and bring that headspace in he grabbed some cotton balls soaked them in alcohol and held them on away from the guy's face oh. so you smell that clean alcohol yeah, smell yeah, yeah, yeah. and it instantly puts you in mind nice. of oh i'm in a doctor's office yeah good thing i'm gonna talk to jim about those <laughs> where, 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 part three act three well no because that's that's the part i was yeah. just thinking of is i'm like it's not just the visual like you have a lot of other of the senses that are going on yeah. so like in terms of like outdoors you don't technically have to be outdoors it would be very challenging to turn a space like this in in the western hotel into like a woods camping scene or the inside of a cabin but it can be done yeah. if you kind of work at it like especially mm-hmm. if the sub comes in and they already have some deprivation like if you blindfold them right. and then lead them in you can have lots of wood surfaces laying around like loose lumber or whatever mm-hmm. rustling you know. leaves right yeah. and so you and have a soundtrack kind of going with like like, like nature, waterfall, and, yeah. And, yeah. And so and, when they're in the room, like they don't really know. Yeah. Like I could see how if you work it really hard, I would be tripped into thinking like I'm really in a cabin of the woods in the middle of nowhere with a serial killer who apparently wants to suck my dick first. <laughs> or what I mean. <laughs> or what I mean. <laughs> so there's that Go on. one. So the second the second class we ended up doing was actually more, um, not skill based, but like kink, more kink based, which was we did a Violet Wand 101 class mm. and the violet wand 101 class was essentially basics about like what a violet wand is what you use it for and um like the good and bad things like the techniques i'm not techniques per se but like um how um it's used in its history and all that stuff it was very it was i'm always in awe when jim teaches because jim has a very commanding um especially when he's quote unquote performing when he's on he will. He can command a room. He can do a whole. Get that, and that really helped in this, in this class in particular, because there was unlike other like one on one classes, mm-hmm. it was a lot of people who knew about it, and very few people who didn't, and that was very interesting. Oh, that's me. good. So did he assess the knowledge of the of the audience? Yeah. 
I sure. love it when a presenter does that, having you know done some corporate training. Mm -hmm. I love it if you get if you get a either a really good mix or the best mix is pretty much everybody's on the same page. So you know everybody's at step one or at step three or mm -hmm. whatever it is. So it sounds like yeah. everyone had some knowledge. So you didn't have to do like, well, this is what this is yeah. and this is that. You get to kind of jump a little. And, and those that something. didn't have knowledge, which there were like six or seven or so, right. they were able to ask questions without like interrupting, quote unquote, the flow of the class. Right. right. That really helped. Um, one other class that I ended up going to, which I would, I kind of want to harp on really quick, is um, I went on yesterday to a consent and negotiation class. <laughs> which, by the way, so for those of you that may not be aware, these are our Cubs Out Loud consent shirts. This is one of them, the designs. This one happens to have the bear paw and the bear paw colors. Damon yesterday was running around in the, the, leather one. the leather one, and we also have a pup one. So they're all slightly different, but they have a different like emblem, symbol, and different color arrangement. And then, of course, you can pick the shirt design that you want at zazzle.com slash Cubs Out Loud. <laughs> um, but I wore my shirt on purpose today because I knew you had worn yours yesterday. Mm -hmm. So at least one of us is wearing our COL stuff today. <clears throat> I don't have one because so. I hang around Dane too much. And if you're in the same room as him, breathing is consent. <laughs> wow. 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 wow, bitch. Um, Shade. Uh, that truth. But yeah, it, was, it, was, it, was, it was a very interesting class because for number one, the presenter was so knowledgeable but also said point blank, this is my perspective, and we are not covering everything that you need right. to know about consent and negotiation. This is just sort of like his perspective, his understanding, and also in the class, which helped is, so I'll preface, Claw, after last year and all the fiasco down on Facebook and everything that happened, they made, they, had a, they made a response team in regards to consent violations and everything. And yeah, which I think was very much needed, especially yeah. in this day and age, with how quickly things on social media can get spread. Yeah. Because I know last year, as soon as somebody caught wind, even the slightest bit of wind of, there was an issue with consent. Yeah. People blew it way the fuck out of the it water. It got really, it got really well, crazy. Well, and, and I mean, look at what's happened in a year since we were last here. Yeah. The Me Too movement like swept the nation mm -hmm. that women were feeling empowered as victims of assault that were like, yes, like I actually have had these issues happen. And, and it became a case of like one speaks up and then others speak up. So we end up with things like the Harvey Weinstein situation. Mm -hmm. For those of you that are watching this in the future, like here's your timeline to the past. Just as Claw was happening, Bill Cosby was found guilty in court of his sexual assault. Mm. So, and that was a case that's been ongoing since I think 2004. They the put his happened. ass in jail. Oh, oh I knew that was coming. <laughs> I've seen the memes online already. Come but, on, you're not Dane. <laughs> Come uh, on. But um, so I mean, like, so all of that I think is a huge piece of our cultural shift in the country. Yeah. So I'm not surprised. I'm I'm proud of Claw for, I guess, taking the necessary step. Of yeah. like addressing it as opposed to mm -hmm. being accused of not doing anything. Yeah, right. You know? And what they like part of the one of the people who was on the because uh, like the um, response team mm -hmm. um, was in the class and she was pretty much saying things about like after everything that happened, Claw got involved and that's where this sort of um, team kind of came together. And she explained they they. The thing that I like most is that she explained things in a, pers a different, a better perspective than, no offense, the Claw Code of Conduct that came out recently mm -hmm. did. The idea behind them saying some of the things they said, because pretty much everyone went black and white. Like, they said that just because you're coming here, attendance equals consent, and she was like, no, that's not what we mean. We are saying that this is an env a different environment. And we need to be, people need to be understanding and aware that you're, you are adults as well. And right. to understand that not every consent violation needs the same reaction. Right. And right. therefore, you, you know, that's what this response team is for. And she mentioned, like, if you want to just report a violation of consent, and you don't want us to do anything, you can tell us that so that we know and have a document of it. If you want us to... Um, follow up with you personally and privately, we'll have someone do that. If you want us to contact the police, if it is, if it is that bad of right. a consent violation, by all means, you know, what, tell us. And, right. What that ends up doing is 
uh, keeping track and record of right. possible times in the future for mm-hmm. these things to happen yeah. again. Because if this person does something to this person and that victim reports it or mentions it, it's been documented and it happens again the following year. Yeah. Well, now we've got history. Yeah, exactly. And now we can do right. something about it. Well, and that's, and I'll speak to that. You know, events do not track that type of stuff typically. Like, yeah. it, like something might get reported. Now, granted, Claw is a, is a much larger event uh, mm-hmm. overall. But I don't think if we asked Adam for NAB that he would be able to say yes. As a matter of fact, like, we have documentation of every incident of yeah. something. That, yeah. It's... Like, if it gets reported, you might know about it. But, like, some events are very clear, cut, and dry. And they're kind of like, nope, that's a legal thing. And immediately the cops are involved. Or right. management for the property or the facility mm-hmm. gets involved. And other times, other groups are like, let's keep it all in-house. Let's mm-hmm. try to, you know mitigate, mediate, whatever it is we need to do, you know, and make sure that we address it and do something without blowing it up. And that's what I find interesting that people have said they like going to events and they are always surprised to hear that something has happened Yeah, and that it didn't turn into this, you know, And And I like, it was was great because the class in and of itself was, he said he combined his consent class and negotiation class into this one class, but it all made sense in the grand scheme of things because you can negotiate everything, mm-hmm. and you're get when you while you're negotiating, you're technically giving your consent on what you want and what you don't want. It's when those things go wrong, where mm-hmm. someone goes past what you've negotiated, that's that's a, a considered a consent violation. Right. You know, if I'm playing with Chester's, you know, sucking Chester's dick, and I <laughs> whack his balls without telling him. He's not going to be happy, first of all, and then he's also that's. You that's, don't know me. I know, <laughs> I know a couple of things did, about. Did you. you seriously not see my post about CBT? I did. <laughs> we we we've had this conversation. I know what to do. I'm just saying in general. I know what you don't like. So if I went through and went from A to or well A to like G, you're okay. But if I went from A to Z, you're gonna be no, bitch, no, that hurts, no. Please, that puppy. Yeah, see? <laughs> so, <laughs> um, in conclusion, I, th- I think the important thing is that there, I agree with you that there is sometimes, you know, the li- there is a line, and that's kind of where it should be stopped. And I think the reason why Claw probably came into such focus this past year, mm-hmm. and the leather, well, other leather entities, I'll put it that way, Leather as a community was built on a concept of protocol. Mm -hmm. It was built on this hierarchical structure about that someone reports to another person. Mm -hmm. There is a sub, there is a dom, there is a boy, there is a, you know, uh, right, a sir, and and all of that stuff. That's where I think the community really kind of had to take a look at itself in the past, I say maybe two or three years, but specifically the past 12 months or more, to address the issue that, we normally police ourselves, but now the community has recognized we have to we have to step up and like ch- and adjust and evolve a little bit to this concept yeah. of no longer can we rely on individuals being able to handle yeah. on that. We level. as a community need to handle our community. Right, and and I think that's an interesting point yeah. because it. To me, I don't see that that much happening in the bear community, but there have been instances. Yeah. Like, I'm no fool. There have been accusations of rape and, you know, yeah. molestation and harassment. And, I mean, hell, we were at an event where there was a fist fight. Um, <laughs> so, you know, I mean, when, when altercations take place, yeah. it's about people losing their cool or, mm-hmm. you know, not recognizing signals or whatever. And, and that's why I think yeah. the leather community was kind of like, Hold up. Like, if one of our principles is that you do not, like, consent has to be given, and there's, like, a prearrangement and an agreement, then why, where is things going wrong? Like, what's, yeah. what's happened? Yeah. yeah. It was very, it was, it was a very good class. And he, he, you know, he, he presented consent in a way that made it easier, I think, for everyone to kind of understand. There's a difference between, like, potentially blowing a scene by every, like, five seconds stopping to say, can, are asking for consent. There's a difference between doing that and like allowing a scene to happen organically and having things stop as they go along. And again, it also has to deal with the reaction of the person. 
Like if you right. if your if you feel your consent your consent has been violated, then you need to react in a way that as I, I think as I mentioned, like um, that is reciprocal of the, the the violation. Like instead of like right. instead of like like the Chester, I would I'm keep using that because it's here. Um, if he like punched me in the face after I did that, might not have been the greatest reaction response. Right response. Whereas, hey, don't do that. I didn't like that. Or I didn't. Con- you can even say I didn't consent to you doing that. Okay. Right. Well, and we do this stuff in our normal day to day lives. I'll I'll own my own like issue that in my past sometimes when I've gotten excited, I've hit people. And I don't hit them to be mean or to inflict harm and pain, but I get so excited in the moment. Yeah. And it's usually like it's a punch on the arm or whatever. But it happened at Indy. Do you remember this? We were in your room and someone that we know was there and I got so excited that I ended up hitting them. <laughs> and they called it immediately and was like, Ow! Like what the fuck, dude? Like that was uncalled for. And, I vaguely remember. And I, like, felt this small immediately because I realized what happened. Like, I acted very, like, emotionally, like, mm-hmm. kind of, like, not so much, like, animalistic, but it was very impulsive. Yeah. And I didn't think through about, like, oh, you probably shouldn't do that. Like, <laughs> this is not a person you've prearranged. Like, you know, yeah. is it okay if I beat the shit out of you? Like, <laughs> I mean, that wasn't really what happened. But, but yeah, you know. I know, yeah. And yeah. so I think that it happens not only just like in scenes and, and in, you know, people having, you know, interactions or sex or whatever. Yeah. It also it's, can happen just, you know, in your, uh, day-to-day life. your day to day and stuff. So, so but yeah, yeah, so you attended, I mean, that was you, class and you then didn't I, really attend very many classes, did you? Uh, Sadly, no. Well, yeah, I mean, you're fr- <laughs> you're photographing a bunch of claws, so that kind um, of limits. I went to a flogging class, and the only thing that I want to say about that is, um, even though I feel that I'm somewhat skilled in flogging, and I've taught flogging classes before, I still went to a 101 class. Yeah. And the reason why is because I want to monitor how other people teach classes. They may say something that I never considered myself. Right. Yeah. Um, in this instance, the person that I was listening to never said anything that, like, oh, I never really thought of that. It wasn't like that. But what I did notice is the guy knows his stuff. He's just not a very good teacher mm. in presenting yeah. his information. Okay. And it makes me think, hey... I need to make sure that I don't do that myself. Yeah. So, well, and that yeah, gets, since I did learn something. That gets to a really good point about Claw. They pushed it for a couple of years, and I think this year they, they got smart. In the app, they included links to the Claw website to fill out feedback surveys online for every single session. Right. In the past, it has been obliterating forests for paper. <laughs> every session you go to, there's a, shit, there's a stack of paper and there's pens. And as soon as your session is over, you're supposed to take, like, three minutes, fill out the thing, and yeah. comment and stuff. And this year, they did both paper and digital. And I loved the digital thing because it was way easy in the app to just click the link, and it opens the Claw website. And then you pick, like, when was the session? Was it Friday a.m., p.m., yeah. Saturday a.m., p.m.? You pick the topic, and then you just fill out, like, three or four fields and mm-hmm. submit. And what I didn't know was, because JT revealed it in the Open by Polly and More discussion, uh-huh. He talked about the feedback survey, and he said, please do the survey. What happens with the survey is Claw looks at it and reviews it, and not only like lets us know how we did, but it also determines our ability yeah. to represent in the future yeah. and kind of basically gives you like ranking. like yeah. you know. And I was like, oh, well, that makes perfect sense. But that was the first time in three years of going to these things, like either day trip or the whole weekend, to hear a lecturer say, a presenter say, what you say about me not only helps me, but also gives me the ability to maybe represent on this topic, or right. now I kind of have this, um, I don't know what you want to call it, like this, you know, the, right, well, you get this, um, like, support structure of what people say about you, mm-hmm. so if you decide to present something different that yeah. isn't what you've done before, Claw is already aware of what you have done, so you you have that... Um, 
uh, kind of your curriculum verite. Right, you know, yeah. it's like it's a little bit of your CV. It's your mm-hmm. um, what the hell do you use in photography? Your um, portfolio. Yeah, thank you. I'm struggling <laughs> to find the right word about um, what word. it is. The, the idea of filling out questionnaires and response forms at the end of a class like this is isn't just based here in this type of environment yeah. at CLAW because I've gone to professional programs like both when I was in school I went to um, an anthropology conference and after every single class there I had to fill one out Mm -hmm. Um, I went to a photography conference same thing the presenters passed around sheets Uh, so it's not just something like this that information is used for good because the the presenters get to read it Mm -hmm. Uh, they get feedback from you they see what was good what was bad what they might need help on exactly yeah on top of it and it applies to me because um, at the end of my flogging class at NAB I told everybody if you enjoyed this class right or you did not enjoy this class does not make a difference please on your questionnaire make sure you tell Adam and the other uh, coordinators what you did or did not like about this class because they want to add classes Mm -hmm. throughout the weekend. The more feedback they get, the more tailored they will be towards next year. Right, which is why for my event, we we just did a whole ton of surveys. Like we normally used to do one. Now I have one for vendors. I've got one for workshops. I've got one for the escape rooms. I've got one for the tours. Like, yes, I was, I I know because I got, Seven <laughs> thousand. <laughs> no, I got Survey. I got three of them, and I didn't answer them right away. And I got a email about a week later saying, "Did you forget to answer these? Please fill them out." Uh, yeah, it's a reminder because well, yeah. those a lot of those are being done through Survey Monkey, and they have one one bigger one that's right. just the run yeah. overall. But so. I wanted that ability to know. Like we had two workshops at my event. One was on consent, and one was on pub play, and. I, I don't want to really repeat year after year because we're such a smaller scale event. Like if we're going to have the same topic, then it's got to be different. Like it just, yeah. I don't want it to be the same exact right. kind of thing. Because this year we had the consent workshop on two days. Because mm-hmm. we wanted people to know if you can't make it Friday, you can do Friday, it Saturday. Yeah. But Claude doesn't really seem to do that, right? No, like, they don't. I mean, it's, it's a one time hit. Like either you can make it on this day and time or like. For the most part. I think well, most classes are done once. Sometimes they're done twice. It depends on what the class is. Popular classes are intro classes to Mm -hmm. gateway kinks and BDSM type play. Flogging is a good one to use as an example. It's a gateway BDSM scene. I went went to a flogging 2.0 class today. There's, uh, I think, if I look in the... Schedule right now, there's probably six, seven flogging classes, and they're all different, and they're taught by several different people. Mm-hmm. Um, I only think that one or two of them are doubled up, and in, in like this teacher taught a 101, and he also teaches a 201. That makes sense. Yeah. Right. Um, there were also about six or seven different classes for puppy play, because puppy play right now is incredibly popular, mm-hmm. and... They want to make sure that it is well covered because we have a lot of goddamn puppies at this event. Mm, We need to make sure that they have something to go to. There's tons of people constantly coming in to the leather community as a whole wanting to learn about puppy play. So they made sure that there's tons of classes (laughs) available. Yeah. It was very interesting. One of the classes I, I wanted to go to but ended up going to was it was a perspective like a different perspective on the pup class it was meant to introduce pup play to non-pup players like it was meant to introduce it to the outside leather, outside the community like leather community and i really love the idea of that class because it made it's the thing that so several times like i'm a, i'm part of a leather group and we've done every year we've done an event at uh, roseland i've mm-hmm. talked about this before on the podcast and one of the things, especially last year, was I kept getting asked questions about, because I was wearing more pup stuff, I kept getting asked questions about pup play. We, I had a literal, like, pup 101 while we were doing our demos because people had so many questions. Okay. And I love the fact that um, Claw is taking note of the fact that people want to know about it from the perspective of someone who is not a pup player. They're not someone who knows anything about it or 
maybe has heard about it or has seen right. this pup or was here in 2015 when all that shit went down um, and wanted to know more about, wants to know more about it without being overly critical. Right. So. Yeah, you bring up a good point about the about the case history kind of thing because I I didn't forget about it, but it wasn't on my mind in 2018 what happened three years ago. Mm-hmm. But that's a good point of like, yeah, like you said, there's a lot of pups here, but there <sighs> weren't just a handful of years ago. Yeah. There was like none. I mean, the same thing even with my event. Like that's something that someone had brought up about how you know there's kind of an evolution of representation, and I'm like. Yeah, I mean, look at what happened at my event this year. All the people running around in the onesies. <laughs> like, uh, at the after hours or whatever on Saturday night. I turn around and I'm like, well, there's another peg of corn, and there's another peg of corn, and there's a zebra, and that's a that's a red <laughs> fox panda something. Like, you know what I mean? It was just... And so, like, it's interesting because there's a part of me that's, like, in my child mind, I'm like, I remember what it's... those were like when I was little. You know, that you got to have this little thing, and now to see it as an adult, like, it's a fun costumey kind of comfort thing so it's not yeah. cosplay and it's not furry it's this kind of in between you know you it's to express yourself between. a certain way um troy. Oh, troy the one in the black unicorn onesie he <laughs> he said he loves wearing onesies because it makes him feel comfortable it makes him feel more like himself and i think that's fantastic yeah that if that's what you need to right. overcome your social anxiety, be able to be around all these people, and you don't give a shit if anybody's looking at you thinking you're weird for doing it, then go for it. And yeah. I think that's why at your particular event, right. where you see, you know, last year there was like maybe two people wearing a onesie. This year there was like seven. I think it's because they see yeah. somebody like Troy right. wearing that all weekend, and they're like, well, fuck, he's comfortable, and right. he has the confidence to wear it. I'm going to wear mine. Yeah. Well, and to be fair, Troy, if you ever end up watching or listening, <laughs> you look cuddly as fuck as a Care Bear. So yeah. that was, like, the, the highlight of the weekend for me. Like, the black unicorn was cute, like, and the, some of the other things. But running around in a blue Care Bear, like, outfit, <laughs> I was just like, oh, my God! Like, like I don't know. It was, it, was it, it was the one with the rainbow on it, whichever one that is. Uh, not happy. Pure. Yeah. Cheer. cheer I was going to say, it's not Pride. Everyone wants to call it Pride Bear, but it's not yeah, Pride Bear. He, he wears a Cheer Bear onesie. Anyway. Yeah. So, yeah. Troy's so, adorable anyway. Yeah. yeah. But yeah. that just that just kind of adds to the, so, to the factor. But, it, um, but it's the same thing here at Claw. You see more and more puppies coming out, and they, you know, people come to Claw, especially younger guys, because they're more impressionable. They see all the other puppies around, and they're like, oh my gosh, I can do that? That's a thing? Yeah. Yeah. And that's where they gain their confidence from seeing others. You align yourself by viewing other people and what they can do. And if you see them confident about it, Mm -hmm. it gives you your own inner confidence to be able to do it yourself. All right, so now I have a question because this just popped in my head. What do you two think about this idea? Do you think that pup play now that it's become absorbed into the Leather King community, pretty much in the U.S., do you think that is the potential of a new wave of a generation in the BDSM King here in the U.S.? Because there has been over the past years, in my opinion, a aging out issue that younger people aren't getting interested in BDSM King. They don't have a gateway. They don't understand. They think it's an old man's club. You have to wear leather when you go to a bar. You know what I mean? Like, I do you think agree. it's like a, it's kind of like flogging is a is like the first the, level usually. The gateway, right? Yeah. Do you BDSM. think that because coming to an event like this, it's not a just a pup event. It's not a pup weekend. It's claw. So while you're here and you're running around in your hood or or whatever, you are also exposed immersed exposed to right. all these other different yeah. things like I, ABDL, flogging, spanking. There's a saline infusion class that was going on. Yeah, today. Paddling. Yeah. Uh, there were a CBT happened. There was um, electro and electro. You've got all this and all this yeah. list yeah. of different BDSM things that go on, and I have absolutely no doubt that there's puppies out there that are like, oh my gosh, there's a leather event that we can go to, where we can gear up. Right. 
and be ourself. And then when they get here and realize that, holy shit, there's this whole list of other things yep, right. that I can go do. Yeah, absolutely. I think they're going to be able to learn about all sorts of other fetishes and kinks that are out there and eventually, that are now available to them. Yeah, and eventually move and maybe move into more kinky things and learn to do it themselves and learn how to explore what they like and what they don't like. Right. Like that was the thing for me. I actually went backwards. Well, not backwards. I was a leather kink person, and then I found pup play, and that was right. just a new dynamic that I have been exploring, obviously. Um, for a while so it's always interesting the things that you especially an event like this where there's so much going on right. so many different classes so many different perspectives so. and, I, and it's an interesting because i think that's one of the things i've noticed is that at first i felt the leather community was kind of like what is this pup thing like they were trying to put their yeah. head around it and now i see older rank and file leather folk becoming handlers Right. And working with the pup yeah. community and that kind of stuff. And yes. I find that very interesting because I'm like, well, isn't that, like, how, like, to me, and it's probably more like the way your mind works, Chester, about the anthropology, like, this, like, kind of evolutionary, you know, there's an absorption and then there's, you know, now we account for this and we yeah. work with whatever right. that, that thing happens to be. Um, I, I want to talk about other stuff that happened over yeah. the weekend, but sure. um, really fine. quick, while we're still on the subject of puppy play, you brought up age. I remember four years ago at the very first Claw event that I had come to, um, the demographic of people that were there, um, I'm going to exclude any type of race or gender, gender or gender expression. Um, simply speaking about age, um, it was incredibly scaled towards the uh, weighted towards the younger side, mm -hmm. you know, younger twenties, mid twenties, up until that was actually about, here at Claw four years ago. Yeah, yeah. Oh, up okay. until about you know younger thirties. Yeah. That's where the shift was. I did remember seeing a few older people. Hmm. One gentleman in his 60s, and I was like, aren't you a little old to be crawling around on the floor? But Oh, oh, you mean involved in pup play. Correct. Yeah. I thought you meant claw overall. So no, I was no, like, no. Just, wow, just, I didn't. Just I'm like, play. I missed when that just was going pup play. Yeah. Just pup. Okay. I, I noticed that the majority of puppies that were around were of the younger generation. Mm -hmm. Four years later, it's very spread across the board. It's still weighted towards younger, yeah. younger yeah, yeah, guys. Yeah. But it's definitely grown. Yeah. And there are now older guys. Most of, the, of them are in a handler type of role. And I think that just happens naturally. Yeah. Uh, for Leatherman to go from sub to dom or you know, so vary that role. That brings me to my other question I wanted to ask, which is... Segue. Pups aging... Do you think pups will stay pups, or do you think pups will age, like, physically and maybe, you know, personality, I, that they will not necessarily be involved in pup at some point? I'm not. I don't, I'm like, yes and no. Yeah. I think Like, I don't it think is, it's predefined, like, three in, three years, you're in, you're out. It's right. more like, over the course of, say, 40 years, do you know what I mean? Like, I would, I would well, think so that... Like, the 20-year-old puppy today... It's not necessarily going to be a sixty-year-old puppy. Well, look at look at myself and uh, my approach to it, and even, uh, even taking out the leather aspect of my right. identity. That's how I identify myself in the bear community. I identify myself as a cub because I think of myself as being young and not hipster, but right. I do things in a younger mindset mm -hmm. like i want to go and have fun and i want to hang out and i want to go do social things go to theme parks and ride roller coasters and do those types of things to me when i think about those things i don't say yeah i'm 42 a 42 year old doesn't do those things a 22 year old does those yeah. things okay so in that aspect yes i'm getting older but that doesn't necessarily change my outlook on or my outward perception of my identity yeah and I, I would agree that puppies today are probably in that same boat the older they get the more experience they get yeah. and their identity will evolve 
probably won't get rid of the puppy side of them. Right. They would just evolve into more of a handler role or an right. alpha role. Or... Right. And, and I mean, it's still possible that a puppy could stay a puppy. It's just the way it's the, it, it'll depend. Like you, you have like 60 year old submissives. You have, right. you have that perspective around that. So it'll always, it'll all depend. Um, so what else have we been doing? Cause it's claw. Um, well, a claw... bunch of people got laid. <laughs> <laughs> people ate food. People got drunk. I didn't get drunk. I actually haven't drank all weekend. Okay. I had a alert. sip here and there. <laughs> I, really I didn't, get, I didn't get drunk, but I did have some, it's, some it's, alcohol this weekend. It's just, but... it's, so for those, for me, it's a more mindset thing. When I come here and I so it seems weird, like I don't do too many things that alter mine. Because if I'm going to do a flogging, right, I'm right. going to do something along the line. I want to have a bit more capa- mental capacity to do said thing. Having said that, I'm, I probably will be drinking this evening. Yeah. <laughs> but there's a, there's well, yeah, a, I mean, like, well, for me, like, I went to the cigar deck last night. Like, I got here on Thursday. Jess and Tony are here. Hey. Um, and I sent a message yesterday because all the sessions had wrapped up. We had gone to dinner. Mm-hmm. Uh, so Jim, Damon, and I had dinner at the Vietnamese place. It's just like a block and a half away. A um, lot of food. It was good food. Uh, I felt bad for the poor staff because there was just two of them working the whole front of the house. Uh, and they kept up really well. And then when we were done and we came back over, we went to the auction. Mm-hmm. Um, by the way, I won my two items that I bid on at the auction. Yay! And, uh, and that kind of stuff. And then when that was done, I was like, we had talked and I was like, I haven't seen them. I know they're here. Yeah. So I literally sent just a message and I said, hello, sir. Like just seeing if I got a bite, like if he would reply or whatever. Cause I thought if I don't hear from him, obviously he's busy. Um, and then he sends me a picture of him smoking a cigar. And so I replied back cigar deck question mark, like, cause it looked like it, but it was also bright because right. the sun hadn't gone down yet. And so he told me where he was. So I immediately just headed there and I sat there for three hours and I know, yeah, that was, and that's thing. the plan probably again tonight. <laughs> like, later on to guys, hang out there. like you guys had messaged in our group chat, like we're on a cigar deck. I was like, cool. And literally, like, unfortunately it was just a perspective. I don't know if that was last night or Thursday night. I think it was Thursday, Thursday. Thursday. I was like, we're on a cigar deck. I was like, cool. I'll maybe head there. And I was like getting ready, getting ready. And I sat down on the bed and that was it. That was it. <laughs> was like, suddenly it hit me and I'm like, oh, and I'm taking a nap now. And then when I got up, I was like, well, shit. So it was like maybe 30, 40 minutes of right. a quick nap. And then I got up and I put clothes on and went down. And um, you guys were gone, obviously, by that point in time. Yeah, but but it, was, it was good. It was it was good. But I got to, it was good to see it. I'll probably head out later tonight. Right. Um, Jim and I will probably do dinner. And then we're going to decide what we're going to do for the rest of the evening. Well, like, then last night, like, the pup mosh took place. So, <laughs> I'm just going to talk about this for a brief moment, because I am not necessarily part of this community, and I did not organize this event, so here we go. When you have a very large activity, and then you convert that space the following year to become a one-stop shop for the vendor market, so that was, that was a good idea. Very that was nice. a good idea. Yeah. However, when you use so much square footage of space, you should probably remember to use same said square footage of space for the following year. True. Not shrink it to one third what it used to be. Amen. And then expect everybody to show up already talking about how small the room's going to be, and yet we all still packed into there, and everybody's like, oh, it's so like it's so like it tight a- and ridiculous, and and so. I want to give kudos to the, the organizers of the Mosh because they immediately commandeered and took over an adjoining space next door and was like, this is empty. We're going to use it. And like threw down like the pads oh. and like and created that additional yeah. area and because I, and... it was ridiculous. Ridiculous yeah. that somebody somehow thought that first space was going to work. I believe the space that they put us in this year was only about, I would say, 50 by 50 square feet. Something like that. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, maybe. That. And last year was so huge, there was two pup major areas, yep. plus there was that whole social area on the far side, yep. and we were been, if you saw our video from last year I shot on my phone, we were over, like, on the panel side or whatever, like, there was backdrop or something, like, yep. on the edge, 
It was huge last year, and I was yeah, like, right. God, bless, this is big. Yeah. And then everyone kept talking about, oh, it's in the Calypso or whatever the hell the room is. Yeah, and I kept thinking, uh, yeah, that's I was, a small I was room. So like, that's not very big. I was personally upset. And then the worst part was I went in pup mode, and I got on the mats, and I find out later that there's another room open after I've already gotten out of space and um. taken things off. And I go and go, oh, there's a whole other room. And people I know were in there, pups I know were in there. And it yeah. kind of felt, I was like, oh, crap, it would have been nice to have played with these other puppies that I know. As Over to, like, here. Not that it was a, not that it was a bad thing. It just, I would have, it would have been nice to have. It was essentially two different pup moshes. Yeah. Held in this, in a area of the hotel that was separated by a wall. Yeah. That was non-movable. That was non-movable. Because that was the other thing was I knew, because I was on the periphery and I knew that the folks that were kind of leading it were like, this is a problem. And they were trying to figure out what to yes. do. So someone poked their head into the space next door and saw, this is empty. Because that's where Bound and, and Beautiful was. Right. And they had emptied it. And they were like, all right, just use it. Just take it over, blah, blah, blah. So they start setting it up. And I looked and I was like, fuck, that wall is not movable. It's not folding or anything. Because if they could have figured out how to get a hold of the hotel staff and collapsed and moved it out, I'm yeah. sure you would have been like, what the hell is that? And then yeah. been like, oh, we just literally more than doubled the entire space so over there. The mosh started at 10.30. Dana yeah, and I, we... Uh, 11.30. Every, 11, sorry, 11.30. You guys probably set up, yeah, for a um, Every year, Dana and I go down and we photograph the pup mosh. And the very first time we did it, our pictures turn out horrible because it's in a ballroom and lighting is terrible. So we got wise, and we started taking lighting equipment with us. So yesterday, we had it down there about 10.30. And the people that were helping to set up were just finishing when we walked in the room. I walked in the room and immediately went, what the fuck? <laughs> and the one of the guys who's leading it turns around, and he's like, what? And I'm like, you're kidding, right? This is our space for the pup mosh? And he's like, yeah. What's the problem? Ah, I'm like, ah. you realize this is going to have like 300 people in here, right? And he's like, so? And I'm like, we're not going to fit. No. There wow. is not enough room here. And about, I, the guy's like, well, I don't know what to tell you because this is where you guys are. Right. This is the room you have. Right. And I'm like, okay. Just and like, I turn around to Dane and I'm like, all right, well, let's just make it work. It's small enough. We only need two lights. And I just kind of rolled with it. About five minutes later, the photography coordinator had come into the room to check up on Dane and I. He knew that we'd be down there setting up. And I'm like, hey, Steve, is there somebody you could talk to about the room? Because this is too small. Right. And he's like, I know. I'm, I'm in awe right now. I don't know what we're going to do. So immediately he's firing off texts to people. Mm. The lead coordinator for all the puppy events, he's sitting in the room. I'm telling him, why are we not next door? There's nothing going on. He's like, well, that thing's supposed to go to 1230. And I'm like, there's nobody in that room. They've got some event going on, but there's nobody in it watching it. Right. Why aren't we in there? Kick them out. <laughs> so within that next half hour, 45 minutes of Dane and I – in the room setting up our stuff the coordinators had gone outside put up one of those uh cue line tape mm -hmm. the stanchion yeah kind of like roping thing they cordoned off another area put more mats out there and they said okay we're going to use this for the quiet space and i'm like really you've got a dj over there playing music super loud you've got a hundred people packed into this small area that are all drinking because it's a social gathering area. Right. This isn't going to work for a, 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 quiet, a area. quiet area. I didn't know they were trying to use it as a quiet area because that's also where they made the announcement of the pup that got their, their name. And they yeah. were trying to make it this thing. And we're standing there. And those of us that are trying to witness it, I didn't know anything about it, but I'm, I'm like, all right, I'm standing here. I'll watch. <laughs> and then I'm like, and they're, they're, everyone around me is asking, what did they say, blah, blah, blah? If that's supposed to be a quiet space, that's a problem. Because even the people who are just watching and observing can't hear wow. what's happening. So there was there was a lot of stuff yeah. going on. It was, but 
they finally got it together and then they ended up making the other space. And then what I found interesting was it seemed very organic that they let it be open and like people were being told as opposed to a mass announcement in the, in the other room, because I think what they were worried about is that everybody would just try to pick up, up and move, move yep. over to there and then vacate the first space, oh, yeah. which wasn't, Really, the intent. Yeah, their point. Yeah, I mean, if I was like I said, I was peeved. I was pissed because only because I knew other puppies that were there that were in that room that I would have liked to have, yeah. you know, hung out. So, with. case in point, and I said this to somebody as I was walking through one of through the puppy playroom. If you are listening and you are here at Claw, make sure you let the Claw organizers know this was a problem. Yeah, <laughs> I will. Don't worry. There was a, a gentleman yeah. who I was walking out with my camera gear. Oh, this was after my camera gear got. Yeah. yeah, somebody had picked up my bag, didn't close it all the way, moved it onto the floor, and then sat where my bag was. And when I went over there, I'm like, the fuck? Who was messing with my stuff? And I grabbed it and I started, I said, to hell with this, I'm done. Um, I was walking out and I overheard somebody say, this is ridiculous. Why are we in this room? And I turned around to him and I point blank said, when you get your questionnaire, make sure you tell the organizers that you are right. not happy with this. Yeah. Right. Because this is, this is what I told people last night. My guess is whoever coordinated the space utilization in the hotel was not at last year's Puppy Watch. Probably. That's my, that's my, that's my like bet. On, on Vegas on the house kind of shit. Because I'm like, <laughs> how else could you have thought that last year's event would fit in that room? God, we no. we You had the biggest space in the whole fucking hotel last year, and then you somehow shrunk it down into this yeah. little whatever. Right. So And I, I felt bad for that, but I was glad to see that they actually, in real time, tried to work on it, adjust it, and then you know do yeah. something about it. I think when people um, showed up for the mosh, and they realized just how small it was... That's when they were like, oh, yeah, that temporary space out front that we decided to use, that's not going to work either. No, and then, not at all. No. And, and I knew just by walking in and showing up, like, because this is the first year I've seen this many pups, and I don't know what this means. I couldn't tell who who was who. <laughs> I hate to say it. Like, if if you and Dane and and you, like, everyone that I know was in their neoprene hoods, Unless I knew you by your shirt, I probably wouldn't have been able to pick you out. Yeah. Because there was just so many. I was like, okay, there's a lot of people, not just handlers it, and observers, but like, and I was like, so that's where I'm thinking to myself, how did they not see this coming? Because even I, just walking through the event, like, throughout the day and stuff, was like, there's a lot of puppies here. Yeah, there were. It is part of the reason so, why I customized my hood the way I did. <laughs> I'm thinking about Be, doing it for next year myself. But. Because, um, yeah, there... I got walked up to by like three puppies this weekend that all walked up to me and they're and come and give me a hug and I'm like, I have no fucking clue who you are. Mm. It happens. Um, Anything else that we did? Oh yeah, I did lots of stuff. <laughs> well, uh, so the past three years, I didn't do it the first year because it was my first year. I didn't know what this event was going to be like. But the second year, I decided to host what I called an inch, uh, uh Meet and greet for introverted puppies. Mm -hmm. So basically, it's me putting a Facebook notice out there saying, hey, if you're coming to Claw, you are looking for a safe space to have dinner and meet people. This is the time, the place. We're going to be here. Show up. No one's going to give you judgment or anything. Mm -hmm. You are given a chance and an opportunity to meet people. So to make you feel at home, here you go. Right. Um, so the past three years I've been doing that. I did it again this year. We had about 16 people sign up. Only nine of them actually showed up, okay. which isn't surprising. It's not like you're required to give an RSVP or anything mm -hmm. like that. Right. On top of it, it's on Thursday. Yeah. Um, Thursday evening, because I do it because it's convenient for me, because I've got other shit going on, right. but I want to do something. So people could have arrived late. Um, yeah. They may have forgot. They may yeah. have already eaten. I don't know. It doesn't matter. We still had about nine people show up, and mm -hmm. it was still a good time. Yeah. 
Um, what else did you do, Chester? <laughs> Went to the bathhouse. The, oh, the Flex bear, bear Pool the, Party. Yes, the Bear Pool Party at Flex. I want to say this about that. Because <laughs> Ray is here today. Hi, Ray. With, with his husband, Emmett. Hey, guys. Um, got a chance to talk to them a little bit. And I was telling Ray, I was trying really politely in the vendor market to basically say it was not the same without you. Last year seemed much more organized. There was a focus. There was a thing. He and David were hosting. There was, like, this little contesty type of aspect. Like, so nobody understood because it was the first time we'd gone to the bathhouse for the pool party for the Bears. But this year, everybody understood the routine. Oh, it's at the bathhouse. But yeah. there was nothing but a DJ. Right. That was it. So We showed up it, it and there was a, music playing in the main It atrium. wasn't a pool party. Was it? it was gay men. Or, well, it was men showing up at a bathhouse where good bathhouse activities take place. That's all it was. I don't, it was and like, I don't know why we're there calling was a, a party. Yeah. It was very interesting. So here's, and I will own that I, I went, I did go into the pool. I did do the pool. I didn't. And I didn't the, pool the pool was. I did the hot tub, and then I did the other parts of the building. Yeah. The, 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 <laughs> so. the hot tub was full by the time Jim and I got there. Yeah. So neither of us could really get in there. And and the reason the hot tub was full was because the pool was frigid. It was cold. It, it was, was cool. It was cold no, last no, no, no. year. I mean, but more so than before. Like I don't know. I I I went in the pool last year, and it was just colder than it was last year. I don't know why. Maybe because it's the weather. Whatever. I don't fucking care. Or their heater's broken. Yeah. Whatever. So, anyway, so I was I, I I put my best effort. I was I did the pool party aspect of it. I was in the pool, for. Maybe. Yay. <laughs> I made it in the pool and then I got and out of the pool. Two minutes and I got, out. <laughs> got in the pool, got out of the pool, grabbed a shower because it was I was cold. I right. grabbed a shower and then proceeded for the rest of the evening or the event time to enjoy the you know, rest. And of the it didn't last as long this year as it did last year. Oh, I didn't notice that because I was only going to be there. I was only there for two and a half hours last year and. A, like two and a half hours this It was year, supposed to be, I, I think, have... three hours long. And this year, definitely, when we four. got to six... Was it four? It was three to seven. Three to seven. Listen, oh, that's even worse. Because by six o'clock, it was dead. Oh, well, people had to leave to go to dinner, and they had other shit to do. No, I know, but last year, when I... I know I stayed longer last year, and when I left, there were more people yeah. leaving and getting a shuttle. Where this year... It was ghost town. Like oh, well, by the time by the time I was done, I was at the tail end of the rush of leaving. Yeah. Um. And I was because I mean there was a lot of people, and then all of a sudden it turns into a ghost town. Like there's not people in hallways. There's not people in it. You're just like when you go to the hot tub because that's the only place there's the most mass of people, and there's ten people in the hot tub. It's yeah. dead. Like it's it it's dies. There's, there's a couple things that I want to say about it. Um, one being that I notice. The behavior of people is very different from this party compared to the bathhouse excursion at, say, hibernation. Okay. Now, I want to point out that both of them are the same in the sense of they are labeled as the bear pool party, pool yeah. party or bear party. Right. This one had a DJ. Mm-hmm. Hibernations does not. Okay. Mm -hmm. The behavior of the people, very, very different. How so? It, I said this to Gary. We were uh, standing in an area where we could see people come into the main... Where you saw us at one point where I was standing in front of him. Okay. The, um, the Flex uh, Spa is set up in basically two main zones there is you, you come through the locker room and it opens up into a large atrium which is the wet area it has right. the hot tub the pool the sauna and the steam room and showers yeah and, sh and a large shower block and then you can walk up a, a flight of stairs and that's where all of the private rooms and the dark rooms are there's the also places. another shower block there. It's yeah. also where you can access the outdoor area, which is a uh, beach sand deck. Yeah, yeah, which was interesting. <laughs> uh, there's also a, there's I... also a gym, which is at the end of yeah, the hot so the tub. Three and three thing. zones. Yeah, yeah. Um, but Gary and I were standing near the uh, when you walk up the stairs. Yeah. 
And we were just standing there talking. And I pointed out to Gary that the behavior of people is strange compared to when you normally go to a bathhouse. You normally go to a bathhouse and people are quiet mm -hmm. and reserved. Mm. And they're, Now I'm understanding what you're trying to tell they me. They are yeah. trying to pick up on those cruising um, cues mm -hmm. of, you know, you're I'm making eye contact, contact right. and yeah. did the guy just look at me because I'm in his path or did the guy look at me, size me up and down and is continuing to look at me to make sure he knows I'm interested? That didn't happen. At least if it did, no one did that shit to me because I didn't notice it. Maybe I don't know. But the one thing I did notice is there's lots of people standing around talking like this and whispering, and they're having a good old time. <laughs> or they're Chester and I, and we're just talking at normal voice, and people are trying <laughs> we're to walk past, and they're just like, "No, nope, okay. we're, we're not going to." It was that funny because I I even said that to Gary. I'm like, "Okay, I know this is going to sound hypocritical, <laughs> but." <laughs> Have you noticed the behavior of people here? They're just standing off in little groups, chit having conversations. And I looked right at him, and I was like, "Like this?" And I was like, <laughs> "Exactly." He's like, "That's why I said hypocritical because we're just kind of standing around and hanging out." Yeah, I just like, want to point know. out that at hibernation, that doesn't that didn't happen. There were times right. that I saw somebody there, like um, right. Someone you saw at the run. Someone I saw at the run or that I know personally. Right. Tony goes to the bathhouse, and if I bumped into Tony, I'd be like, are you having any luck or anything like that? You know, or, what right. are you doing for dinner later? Sure, right. we might have a little conversation. We don't stand there and hold a conversation, though. Right. So there wasn't just that. There were a lot of people, like, congregating and playing in like non oh yes like non like sitting like, on the bench in yes! the hallway what the hell was that shit there was a point that oh my god so we're walking through <laughs> and we come up to where there's a seed there's there's activity yeah. it's a little loud like not loud but like yeah. you can <laughs> there are probably someone's ass is getting pounded and there's probably what like a, a dozen, dozen guys people. they're all gathered around some people are sucking each other so i'm gonna jerk it i mean but this was just <laughs> out of the Gary, blue. I'm like, hey, this is a fire hazard. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, and I look at him because I'm like, his delivery was so perfect because I couldn't tell if he was being an asshole, like he was being sarcastic, or if he was seriously concerned that this mass of people is a problem because you can't get through. It's so both. he says within within two seconds or three seconds, he goes, I'm going back the other way. So we go back walking, and we're halfway down the hall, and I said, were you being sarcastic, or were you seriously concerned? And he's like, well, both. He's like, but, yeah, I was being, like, I was being sarcastic, but he was, uh, but it was true, like, but it I was. I wanted to get through. But that what happened, happens? But that happened, I will agree with you, that did happen a few times, and unexpectedly, the, all the times I've ever gone to a bathhouse, very rarely in a traffic space. Yeah. Does an activity happen? It usually is in a room, in the movie room, in, in the glory section. Or even section, if it does happen, it's just whatever. casual touching, and then sucking people are maybe. like, yeah, yeah, maybe Right, sucking. then they travel. They go and to another like, space. they're like, let's move. take this But, but not else. here. People were just like, You're I, gonna fuck right in the hall. Well, I mean, to be fair, they were just going for it. Yeah. Like, like, that was the other thing, I think, about that activity. Even though it was four hours long, like, it was done and over in less than two. I honestly think because I think people well, were riled up and they were horned and it was like that's why I think some of that activity was happening in the hallway. It was very interesting. The, the the thing that caught me the most was I ha I was like you said there was literally like almost like scenes like there was a there was and uh, anyway there was a there was a bigger guy and I'm assuming his husband or boyfriend or whatever and the guy was getting sucked on and his boyfriend was there as sort of like a like handler, like, handler, protector kind of thing. I was like, well, that's new. Like my, my, my perspective got skewed because yes, I'm in a bathhouse, but also I'm realizing I'm at a bathhouse at Claw. At Claw, right. yeah. And that would very thing, like, well have been somebody wanting a humiliation scene or, or some, fuck as many guys as you can. Yeah. Or the dom and the sub have that type of a dynamic where the sub is going to service yeah, right. as many people or whatever. And that's but what the like, dom is going to observe and supervise yeah. to make sure no Exactly. Happens. And that was my thing. Like I was like, oh wait, it, it took me a second to like, okay, 
when because when it was in like literally in like the like a hallway like right where right there like here's 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 entrance and here's dick like like, like okay right and the entrance here's the dick. yeah and so it was it was weird in a perspective and then like i had it took like i said it took my brain a little bit to realize okay you're not just at a bathhouse, Damon. You're at a bathhouse at Claw. Right. So you have to realize that there's a different dynamic that could potentially be going on. Right. And I, I agree what we're talking about right now. Like, the common thread is a bathhouse experience when there is no event and a bathhouse experience when there is an event is very different. I've been to bathhouses when there's been a porn star, like, event mm -hmm. <laughs> where it's this big deal and there's a porn star and everybody wants to have sex with the porn star, but actually they don't get to. You just get to look at it. Yeah. Well, the porn star, I shouldn't call it it. <laughs> Um, I've, and then I've been when there's a bear event and I've been when there's a leather event and they're all different flavors mm -hmm. and yes, the audience, the crowd, the participants, the dynamics are very different. And yes, this time it was a lot of chatty Cathy's and a lot of fast moving, like, like normally in a bathhouse people kind of stroll, but mm -hmm. I don't know, like maybe everybody was just like, you know, hyped up on caffeine and horny something. or something. Or something whatever it was, people were like, we're, we're ready to go. I mean, <laughs> ready. Like. I, I saw a lot. I saw of, a lot of bouncing peen <laughs> when we were walking around. I was like, "Well, he's ready to go. He's ready to go." Yeah, I love Quick Time that's... March. <laughs> <laughs> one, two, three, four. One, two. Three, I was four. just like, oh, yes, yes, yes. I was Ooh. like, "Wow!" <laughs> and I was like, and I like, and I hate to say it. Every time I saw a man walking around with an erect penis, regardless oh of size, girth, or whatever, I was like, "Well, she took a pill." I, I was, That's all I, I kept thinking serious, because like, there was there was only one guy that actually had a cock ring on, um, that was walking around kind of like that. Everybody else, no, <laughs> no accessory, right? And they Standing were just addition. they yes, there they were saluting. So. This, 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 this evening, that evening, this evening. And we're so, so sure the audience really cares to know that. <laughs> well, so <laughs> to rest, they couldn't so, be there. So to wrap up the bathhouse experience at Claw. If you didn't get laid, it's your own damn fault. Because <laughs> it was available. My, well... There was a lot of people. Uh, well, never mind, I won't say anything. It's interesting. If there's perspectives, there's a perspective. And I won't go there. Um, um, yeah. But well, it's possible. I, and I will say this. If you, if you arrived later, mm -hmm. it was sort of unfortunate for you. Right. Because, yeah. like, when I got there, I thought I was early. And we were talking. Chester was 20 lockers ahead of me. I didn't even know he was there. Like, by the time I arrived, and then when, when I saw you, I think you had come over to the hot tub because I was sitting and relaxing. And I was like, oh, you're here. And the whole time we're talking, I'm thinking you just arrived. Yeah. And then a half an hour goes by, and we're talking. And then I said something about, oh, did you get a locker out here or in the main locker room? And you're like, no, in there. And I was like, well, what number were you? Because I, I knew what my number was. I was trying to gauge, like, when you arrived after me. Mm -hmm. And then I'm like, oh, you're 20 lockers ahead of me. Yeah. Like, it was very so once once it spilled out of the main locker area to the the lockers next to the pool and the hot tub mm -hmm. i'm like now you know like it's hopping and there's a lot of people um, here and stuff and i think the later you ended up arriving yeah. i don't know how else to say it it's not a loss but you're yeah like the party's already going so to people speak, are already people have already started their connecting and and have probably yeah. finished their connecting i will own that it i I go when I go to a bathhouse in general. I don't want to go like in within five minutes be like shot and done. I want to wouldn't like, have bothered me any. <laughs> that's what I was. Well, there for. I mean, but that's to be fair. I mean, that was something I think I had talked to you about. There was a guy that I was hooked up with, and then like oh he, yeah, he's he like, kind he of stopped you right. He kind of at one point he kind of stopped me. I talked to Chester about it. Yeah, and I was like, and he's like, you're really good. I don't want like I don't want, I don't want to write to see it. My logic, no, yeah. right, and it was really funny. I was like, "That's okay." Yeah. And I was talking to Chester about it, and I think you were a little confused, like, because like I was taking it more like as a badge of like honor. You yeah, like, you said it's you a badge like, of honor. And you're like, like, "Okay, why?" Yeah. And I was like, "Because like he could have." Yeah. Like, he but have. he. I've was, had that happen I don't before. Think of it that way because well, I don't normally take that long. So. Well, it's it's a, like for, yeah, that was my thing. I wasn't expecting to be like. I but was, if a, but if a man, no offense, sorry. Yeah. If a, a man normally takes on average, this is my estimate. This is not an official study number. If it takes an on average a man seven minutes, and you get there in three minutes, yeah, that's skill. Um. Yes, and there's also other factors. But so. anyway, <laughs> moving right along. I'm wearing my skill badge, thank you very much. <laughs> you can. I have no judgment against it. 
<laughs> anyway, so yeah, I'm not going to best. yuck your yum. But yeah, yeah, but that's my thing. I I normally don't expect to go like I don't go with the intention of like going and then getting it and then be like. Well, I in had, my yeah. case, I would have been totally okay with it because if I was shown up and I did what I wanted to do, I would have been like, "Fuck, I got, I got the gift of time. Let's go back and shop." Yeah, that's <laughs> good for you. That's the way that I looked at it. That's great, baby. Um, for me, I didn't expect it, and it actually happened where I met someone who I had been talking to on Growler, and he happened to catch me, and he was hot, and we that helps. Uh, we connected. And within, I, I knew I hadn't been there that long. And we, I was, I had Yay! enjoyed it and it was a good time. And I was like, hey, well, now what do I want to do? Well, now I want to, I usually, when I come, I want the opposite. I want to now service. So I proceeded to find someone, yeah. someone to service. So it's called so ones. Yeah. Yeah. Plural, whatever. Yeah. Ain't no judgment. <laughs> no judgment. Do I need my Sharpie? Speaking of shut the <laughs> oh, no. There we go. I forgot about that until just now. Right, I knew as soon as you said it, I'm like, and we're gonna discuss that. <laughs> well, I do want to say one other thing that I did over the weekend that was this one a pretty good big Girl. thing to me. Okay. I, was, I, I don't was know where y'all are going. No, I was saying girl. I was being like, an asshole in case y'all didn't figure that out. I was being <laughs> shady. You're like, I, what? there's just one more thing. And I was like, oh, just one? Really? No, because it's a big thing to me. But I did want to put, but now that you mentioned the Sharpie, there's something else I wanted to mention. Okay. So um, people know that a few years ago at Claw, I started doing the hash mark thing. Yes. So a friend of mine comes up to me yesterday. And it's the first time I'd seen him here for the weekend. He's like, hey, Chester, and walks up to me and gives me a hug, and I look at his shirt, and it says, men serviced with one hash mark in Sharpie on his shirt. And I'm like, the fuck is that? And he's like, imitation's the best form of flattery, isn't nice. it? And I'm like, okay, I see you, and I mm. give him a hug, and I'm like, oh, honey, you need to do some more to aspire to my level. <laughs> 17? Oh, no. 17. What? Oh, I don't know that story. We'll catch that another time. It gets better because to tag on to that, so we're at the bathhouse, and then a certain person who happens to be a member of our entourage, and that's all I'm going to say, shows up and then rattles off their numbers. (laughs) And we were like, wait a minute. I said literally, you have been here 24 hours. (laughs) And they were like, yeah, but I'm proud of the fact that my numbers are balanced. (laughs) Yes. So kudos to you, certain listener. Yes. I don't know if you want your well, name said, so yeah, I'm not well, going to. With that, <laughs> what was your other big thing? Oh, you so discuss? you know how at my very first NAB, I got cub, cub-napped by the Iowa Bears? Oh, yeah. yes, yes, yes. Now I know what you want to talk about. So this particular year, um, I wasn't exactly cub-napped. Not quite the same as, hey, let's go to dinner, and I'm being thrown in the back of a van, hauled off to dinner. wasn't quite like that. Um... A couple months ago, Mike Revis, who is the NAB Muscle, muscle Bear, Bear, I make sure of 2018 NAB the, the current title Muscle family. Bear. Yeah, I want to make sure I got, got the t- title correct. Um, he was at in Columbus for um, Olympus Leather event, mm-hmm. and him and I got to chatting, and he said, "Hey, you know, you should check out Onyx. I think you'd uh, enjoy that club and what we stand for." And I'm like okay and he told me a little bit about it and he's like there's a we would be part of the great lakes chapter which includes you know all of the great lakes and kentucky it goes beyond that i'm I'm a little fuzzy and confused but for the most part great lakes i think it's the later last state yeah kentucky um and i told him i'm like well you know if i'm ever in a city that's hosting an event absolutely i would love to show up So, after the bathhouse yesterday, I am getting ready to leave, and there's a gentleman uh, standing next to me. We're checking out, and he asks the employee at the bathhouse, hey, do you know when the shuttle bus arrives? And the guy's like, no, I have no idea. And he says something like, oh, man, I got to get going. I've got something to do. And I'm like, well, come on, let's go. The bus is leaving. And the guy's like... Okay, 
and he grabs the stuff and he's walking behind me. He's like, "Well, where do we go?" And who's, I'm like, "Who's this guy?" I'll get to it. <laughs> All right. He's, he I thought grabs I the that. stuff. And he's walking behind me. He's like, "So where's the bus?" And I'm like, "Oh, I'm parked right here." He's like, "Oh, you're giving me a ride?" And I'm like, "Well, yeah, you're going to the Westin, right?" And he's like, "Yeah." Well, hop in. Right. So we get in the car and I'm like, "Hi, my name's Chester." He's like, "Hi, my name's Rod." And I'm like, "Okay, nice to meet you." <gasps> oh, sorry. I know who this is. Okay. He's like, oh, nice to meet you. And we get to chat. And he said something like, thank you so much for, for the ride. Um, I'm actually uh, on my way to an Onyx meetup. We're having dinner at wherever he said it was. And I was like, really? I didn't know there was a meetup. I'm part of the Facebook, the Onyx Facebook group. Somebody had mentioned wanting to do a meetup, but nothing ever came of it. Mm-hmm. And he's like, well, yeah, it was kind of thrown together last minute. And this is where we're going. And um we're we're all meeting up there and i'm like oh okay well mike revis blah 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 i told him that he's like absolutely you should come by and i'm like i'm signed up to do photographs so i don't know maybe i'll show up Mm -hmm. i don't know yet i've got other obligations he's like well the invitation's there nice okay i get back here i heard because i'm starting to be late for other things oh parade of colors um, I make it down there, do the shots that I need, come back upstairs. I'm like, you know what? I am going to go to this. So I ended up going to the Great Lakes Onyx, or I'm sorry, the Onyx meetup with Great Lakes being there. And there were several other chapters. chapters. Mm-hmm. And I got introduced to the president. Um, oh, Okamari. Okamari. Ochimera, I believe. I can't remember. Off the top I can't of pronounce it. I know how to spell it. Um, Sir right. Ben. Um, I met Jay Phoenix. He's the vice president. The gentleman Todd that I talked to, I believe he's from Detroit. Um, unfortunately, Mike Ravis wasn't there. I would have expected him to be there, but I didn't see him. Mm. Um, Freddie, who is the 2018 NAB Daddy Bear, was there. And mm. I never got to meet him at NAB, but I went up and introduced myself and I was like, Hey, I was one of the photographers. I know who you are. This is who I am. Mm-hmm. Uh, and like 10 other people throughout the evening came up to me and, and introduced themselves to me. And I thought that was incredible because I've never gone to a club event like that right. where people were so forthcoming with, Hey, I recognize that you are new here. And you are uh, considering being a prospective member. Here's me. This is who I am. This is what I'm a part of. Thank you for coming, whether you join or not. Mm. We appreciate you being here. I thought that was fantastic. So I got to meet a good dozen or 20 people in just that three hours of Sitting around, chatting with them, having a couple drinks, eating dinner, and then we came yeah. back. Oh. I thought that was awesome. Well, that's cool. That kind of reminds me of when I went to the Smoke Deck last year. And I just hung out with a couple of people that I knew. And because they know a lot of people, suddenly like, get... all these people just keep coming by. Yeah. And they're like, oh, this is Gary, blah, blah, blah. Not that I remember many people's names or faces, but I was just kind of like, hi, nice to meet you. You know, like, I, I felt more fly on the wall kind of last year. And then, like, last night, um, there was a little bit of that, but not quite as much. But I also don't think the cigar deck was – well, we didn't – we were there early. Like, I was there from 8.30 to 11.30, so I wasn't really there later when it might have gotten busier. Like Because I, I did hang out with Chess and Tony, and they were like – it's getting a little chill, like, and they had had dinner. They had a really good but uh, very big uh, meal. And so being at Cigar Deck was literally just about chill. Like, it was just a relaxing kind of, mm-hmm. not really meant to be, like, a big active kind of, you know, thing or scene or whatever. So, yeah, no, it, um, yeah, it's been pretty good. So I'm happy to say that I got to see almost everybody that I wanted to see. There's only one person left that I need to see. And I only say that because when I was at Mid-Atlantic Leather, I bought them something from the vendor mart because I sent them pictures through Facebook Messenger and was like, this immediately makes me think of you. Do oh, you belt? want it? Yeah, the belt. So uh, Bob is here, and we haven't seen each other yet, but he's like, <laughs> I will end up at the cigar deck. I'm like, okay, so we'll yeah. meet up tonight at the cigar deck so I can give him the belt and he can give me the money In, for it. So. Uh, 
If not, I can always ferry it back. I see Bob probably yeah. two, three times a month. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, yeah. technically, I could have just put the damn thing in a box and shipped it, but uh, anyway. it was just kind of yeah. one of those things, like, I get to give it to him in, in person. So, yeah, but he's about the only person. Everybody else I've seen. Can I um, Bob? I will say, <laughs> crap. Um, and I will say this, uh, people are not here at Claw this year for personal reasons and, you know, other obligations and stuff like that. So, yeah. um, for those of you that are not here that have been here in the past, we miss you. Um, and we'd like to see you again at some point, yeah. hopefully. Uh, but yeah, no, it's been it's been pretty. Good. We understand why you're not here. Um, we support your decision. Yeah. Yeah. There's been there's been some personal decisions that people made about stances in involving like yeah. how things are handled on certain aspects and that kind of stuff. And I understand that. I also would hope that we can get more participation mm -hmm. to evolve and change. Yeah. Because choosing not to attend does have some effect, but does not. It's not right on the front line of like yeah. helping address some things, depending on what that is. And I, I always say that everyone has a right to their own right choices to do things and not do things. So yeah, by all means, keep on, keep on. Yeah. Right, so um, that. Are you looking for the stuff so I don't uh -huh. forget? <laughs> I was yep. like, because we're wrapping up, and I'm like, and I usually just do it off the top of my head, and I usually get it wrong. Uh, so. The folks that don't know this spiel, you have lots of ways you can get in touch with us. Check us out. Obviously, you can go to CubsOutloud.com, which is our website and blog. You can check out the things that get posted on there. You can also get in touch with us on social media very easily. Facebook, um, Instagram, Twitter, Tumblr, all that type of stuff. You just type in uh, Cubs Out Loud as one word all together, and you should be able to find us that way in that case. Um, you can follow us on Telegram and join our COL Entourage chat, where it can go from nerdy things to Dick. incredibly bear-related topics that we Dick. often talk about, and Dick. Dick. As fast as Damon was saying it, that may appear, so just be yes. forewarned. Exactly. It is very much an explicit kind of group, unintentionally. I have nothing to do with that portion of it, just for the record. It just all kind of happens. It does all kind of happen. Um, no, but you read it. <laughs> There's not a way to not read it. It's a it's a flowing any, any stream way, wall kind of thing. So after Telegram. Um, also, if you want to give us a call, you can do so, uh, and that would be to three six one C O L talk. That's three six one two six five eight two five five. So you can leave a message, and we can play it on the show. Hopefully, uh, in a future year. Um, obviously, if you're watching us, you already know that we're on YouTube. Uh, YouTube.com slash Cubs Out Loud. Uh, normally we do live uh, shows that get produced straight to video, and then we also take out the audio. So if you're interested in podcasts and you find us via video, but you like the audio version, um, you can subscribe to us, find us online. You can also rate us. Uh, you can rate us on iTunes, thumbs up on Stitcher Radio, basically anywhere that we exist. Give us the feedback. We'd appreciate it. Let yeah. other folks know um, in that case. That's pretty much the most of it, isn't it? Oh, also, there's two ways that you can support us for Cubs Out Loud. One is you could buy merchandise from Zazzle.com slash Cubs Out Loud, where you can get different items, including shirts, hats, um, and like home accessories. And... You know, there's a lot of apparel stuff, but then there's also some home goods. You can get, you know, like mugs and, and things of that nature. Uh, also, if you're interested, we have Patreon. If you're not familiar with it, it's a subscription service where you can actually, for as little as a dollar a month, uh, or there's other categories, $2, $5, or $10 a month. On the first of the month, uh, you make a donation to us, and then we're banking and utilizing that money for future endeavors, such as we're on the road. So we're actually using personal equipment that we kind of Frankensteined together. <laughs> so I want to give a huge uh, thanks to Dane uh, slash Pup Dozer for borrowing his lighting so you could actually see us. Because I was too lazy to pull out my own. <laughs> his was already here. His was right um, here. It was... But one of the things, like, I know the audio quality for this video and audio podcast is probably not the greatest because we're not using, like, professional, professional type stuff. And that's kind of the goal of Patreon is, like, we can reinvest in equipment mm -hmm. and things of that nature. So lots of All things right. to do. If you want to get in touch with any of us, you can find us online under our nicknames. I pretty much go by GareBear73. That's G-A-R-B-E-A-R-7-3. Uh, social media, all that kind of stuff. And I'm TheaterCub79 on Bear and Ground. Or not Bear and Ground anymore. Yeah. Etc. 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 Yeah. Or you can find me as pup underscore umbra on Twitter. 
And you can find me on Tumblr or Twitter under the name The Pup Up There or um, any other bear dating type of site uh, under the name Cupcake76. And with that, that's pretty much it. So thank you all for watching. Woo-hoo! Good night, everybody. Bye. Good night. Say bye, Berlick. Bye, Berlick. Bye, Berlick. <laughs> <laughs>